how to get out of trouble. Amen. <laughs> I got one. I got one confirmation here this morning. Bless the Lord. <laughs> how to get out of trouble? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got out of trouble, didn't they? Paul and Silas got out of trouble. Uh, Jonah got spit up out of trouble, didn't he? But all of them had some things they had to do. Hello? They didn't just get out of trouble for nothing. They had some things they had to do. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to commit to God and not bow down to the idols of the world. Amen? Paul and Silas had to sing and praise God in the middle of the trouble that they were in. The prophet Jonah had to repent and agree to do what God told him to do. And you know, if he hadn't have, he'd have died in the belly of that whale. Did you hear me? He'd have died in the belly of that whale if he had not repented. We need repentance in the church. Some people don't like rep Oh, you're preaching, oh, you're preaching, oh, rough on us now. Yeah. That's because I don't want you to go into hell. That's why. And we need repentance. That means change your behavior. You mean I can't just live like the devil and go to heaven? No, you cannot. You can't just do what the world does and expect God's blessing. You're not going to get it. You're going to get swallowed up by a whale. You've got to commit to Jesus. Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you're going to take up your cross and follow me. Amen. Hallelujah. Take up your cross and follow me. That ain't a, that's not a popular message. You don't hear that on some of the TV channels. Amen. Oh, you, you just hear, you know, you send me your money and we'll give you and you'll have all this money. You'll become wealthy and all this stuff. Amen. So sow the seed this direction. You can live like the devil if you want to. No. I say keep your money. Amen. Amen. Keep your money if that's where your heart is. If your heart ain't right, it ain't, you're not going to get a blessing. We got to have right, we have to have right hearts Amen. and right attitudes. Amen. 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 And so, uh, bless the Lord. We, uh, it's a heart issue. Everything in life is a heart issue. Your relationship with your spouse, heart issue. Relationship with God, heart issue. Relationship with your family, heart issue. Well, I'm having so much trouble in my relationships. You're having so much trouble with your heart. That's what you're having trouble with. Well, we just fuss all the time. You have a heart issue. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the Heart, the mouth speaketh. Well, I just can't control my mouth. No, your heart needs to be tenderized. Well, I just had a fit. Your heart needs to be tenderized. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? I can't quit doing this behavior and I can't quit doing that behavior. Heart. Heart. When Jesus gets a hold of your heart, we used to sing a song in the Baptist church that said, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. If this world is too important to you, heaven is not. You ever heard the saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too? <laughs> Some people want to live like the devil, but then have the blessings of heaven. No, can't have it. Sorry, I hate to tell you, but what you sow, you're going to reap. You ever read in Galatians 6, 9? And Galatians 6, 7? It says, don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, sowing, that's what you're going to reap. Hello? So we need 
to make sure that we've got that we've done what this song said, humbled ourselves in the sight of the Lord. Does, does that mean perfect? No. Humbling yourself doesn't mean you're perfect. Humbling yourself means you're admitting you're not perfect. Amen? Glory to God. Do you think anybody in the Bible ever had trouble with sin? How about David? Think, you think pornography's new? David just got live pornography. He just went out up on the rooftop, looked over at Bathsheba over there taking a bath. Of course, I got a question. Why in the world was she out there taking a bath on the rooftop? But anyway. Because her name was Bathsheba. That's why. <laughs> oh, my. Bless the Lord. <laughs> And 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 oh and oh and, and oh Noah, Noah got drunk. Does God forgive sinners? Well, He sure does. He sure does, don't He? If He didn't, not a one of us would get to go to heaven. But because of His amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Because of His amazing grace, we get to go. But but my point is. Let's not take advantage of the grace of God by just going ahead and just doing whatever we want. Well, it's sin, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, but there's going to be a consequence. I'm not saying you'll necessarily go to hell, but you, you're going to suffer along the way. I mean, Jonah didn't go to hell, but he got swallowed by a big whale. God can send consequences to you to bring you home. The children of Israel didn't get to go where they were going in the Bible, so God sent, the Bible says that God sent hornets. It's just sting them right along the way. They're where they're, got them going the right direction. Reminds, reminds me when you was mowing my lawn and you got all those hornets. Daniel Brittany's, he got stung by, I guess, a hundred hornets. Now, that wasn't from the Lord. That, wasn't a, that, wasn't, that, that was definitely not. That was that was bad. Oh my goodness! Me and Daniel got up. We went. We went at dark. We went and poured a whole gallon of gasoline down and killed that hornet's nest. Or was it? Was it yellow jackets? Yellow jackets. Man, that was something. But God, you know, the the Bible says that uh, in the Old Testament that God uh, told the children of Israel said, if I, if I need to, I'll just put a hook in your jaw. And if you won't go where I tell you to go, I'll put a hook in your jaw and draw you by the way that you would not. So he said, don't be stubborn. If you're, if you're stiff-necked, he, he actually said this to him, if you're stiff-necked, he said, you're, you're going to get your neck broke. How many wants to be pliable before the Lord? See, the Bible says, thou art the potter, I am the clay. The clay doesn't say to the potter, I ain't going to do that. No. The clay just says, yes, Lord. It's a little tough, though. Could you put some more water on there? <laughs> Amen. And sometimes when he's, he's molding us and he's making us and he's changing us and he's helping us to grow, sometimes we need the water of the Holy Spirit to soften us up a little. And sometimes these praise and worship services and these songs, they just, they just melt our hearts, don't it? And, the, and they, they melt our hearts so that we can be pliable before the Lord. And we need to be pliable. Amen? I, I always say this, blessed are the uh, flexible, for they shall not be broken. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know. That just all was coming out of my head. But anyway or spirit or something. I hope it was coming from the Holy Ghost. But anyway, we want to pick back up and look at some scriptures on how to get out of trouble. I guess from what a little bit I said right just now, repenting's a good thing to do to get you out of trouble, isn't it? Repenting, being willing to say no to the world, being flexible, saying yes to God. Amen? When we do that, then God can pour out His blessing on us. He just, you know, God just, is a, God just wants to bless you. He wants to bless you worse than you want to be blessed. He's just waiting for you and I to get into position to where he can bless us. 
Are you listening to me? See, there's certain keys that have to be in place. There are certain things that have to be in place in our lives for the blessing to come. The blessing will not come in, uh, under certain circumstances. I can look at my watch for just one second here. Some of you don't like it when I do that. Okay. Psalm 91, verse 15. We're going to look. And this is number six. I'll read one through five real quick. Not, I'm not going to go over them, but one was uh, put a shut to the up. Uh, which means be still and do what God tells you to do, not your own way. Number two, trust. Number three, know his name. Number four, seek, God's, seek God as a treasure. And then number five, sing, sing, sing. We need to sing and worship. I, I tell you what, you, I just feel better after I've sang here for a while, don't you? Glory to God. Number six, we're going to look uh, at don't delay, pray, pray, pray. Don't delay, pray, pray, pray. Put, don't put off prayer. Uh, don't put off prayer. Prayer is your most, in, one of your, well, I don't know if it's the most important, but it seems to me like it is, uh, your most important weapon against the devil and also in connection with God. When you pray to God, you get in connection with God. And when you get in connection with God, uh, it breaks that hold that the devil wants to try to hold on to us with, with different things. You know what I'm saying? So let's look at Psalms 91 for just a minute. I like Psalms 91. It's one of my favorite Psalms of the Scripture. Is it going behind me, Psalms 91? Okay, and let's look at verse 15. Psalm 91 and verse 15. Hallelujah. He shall call upon me. Well, let's go to verse 14. Because he hath set his love upon me. Well, that's not in my list of, of things, but we do need to set our love on the Lord. You can set your love on a lot of things, can't you? Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your job, money, things, a new car. You set your, your heart on a lot of things. But those are not important as the Lord is. They're important in their place. In their place. Are you listening to me? In their place. But you've got to have God. Where is God supposed to be in our lives? Number one, isn't he? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make into thee any grave. You shall not. Amen. Amen. Number one. God's got to be number one. Amen. And so, what were verses on 14? Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I guess we can add that. That can be 6A or 6B or something. That we need to set our love on him. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Number uh, 15 says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. See, we're talking about getting out of trouble, aren't we? I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him. When? When you set your love on him. When you know his name, and when you call upon him, call on the name of... The Bible says in Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 13, I think it is, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Call on his name. Well, I called on his name back in 1934. <laughs> and I got saved. Well, hallelujah, sister, but you need to call on his name every day. You need to call on his name every time you're in trouble. And in fact, it's even better if you call on his name before you get in trouble. When you see the devil coming your way, <laughs> call on his name. Amen. Amen. It says, I will deliver him. Do you ever notice the Lord's prayer says that we should pray every day uh, and lead us not into temptation? <coughs> Amen. Not... Lord, get me out of this because I got into temptation and I gave in. <laughs> uh, 
Amen? The Lord's Prayer don't say that, does it? No, it says, lead me not into temptation. We should pray that every day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And Daniel got out of trouble. But see, he wouldn't be he wasn't supposed to be praying three times a day. And he wasn't supposed to and he wasn't supposed to pray at all unless he was praying to their idol. And so he didn't, but he just went ahead and did what he's what he's supposed to do every day. He went ahead and prayed three times anyway, and God delivered him out of the, the, the mouth of the lion. Hallelujah. He delivered him out of the mouth of the lion. And he'll deliver you out of your situation. Listen. Put him first. Put your love on him. Amen. And if you've got your love on something else that's uh, more than him, you're not going to get a blessing. You've got to make that adjustment. Adjust your levels. Get God first. Hallelujah. Because he has set his love upon me. Yeah. He shall call upon me and I will deliver him. And not only deliver him, but honor him. You know, you call on the name of the Lord, you get to talk to the Lord, you get to fellowship with the Lord. He's not only going to deliver you out of your situations, but he's going to honor. You know what that word honor means? It means a lot of things. It means he's going to honor you, for one thing. But it also, in the Hebrew, means he's going to bless you financially. Yeah. You look at that in the Hebrew, it, it says you're going to be weighted down with blessings. It means to be weighted down with blessings. I want, hey, I want some of that. Give me some of that. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Pray, pray, pray. Amen. When we, um, I, I'm just convinced that prayer is the answer to so many things. Jesus uh, walked in such power with God. But every time you'd catch Jesus having a little bit of free time, he'd go up in the mountain and pray alone. He got him some alone time with God. He prayed and he sought the Lord. How come he had so much power? Prayer. Elijah, the Bible says, that was a man in uh, James chapter 5, verse like at the very end of the chapter there, says that he was a, a man like, uh, like as we are, but he prayed to the Lord. And he said that his prayer was a fervent, white-hot prayer. You ever read the scripture that says... Um, um, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I think it's verse 16 of, of James 5. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means white hot. That's what that means in the Greek. White hot prayer. That means passionate. Passionate. On fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'd be on fire for a lot of stuff, people, <laughs> out there. Amen? Especially if you're young and you've got too much hormones going. You can be on fire for a lot of stuff. But let me tell you what you need to be on fire for, Jesus. 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 Amen? Somebody say amen or oh me or something. Grunt, something, do something out there. All right, number seven. Speaking of being passionate, Psalms 34 17 and 18. Psalms 34, verse 17 and 18. The righteous cry out. This were interesting. I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of the verse before I get into it. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers for them from all their troubles. Oh, I like being delivered from how many of their troubles? Some of them. All their trouble. The Lord is close to the broken and hearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. That word crushed in spirit means humble or humble or humbled or broken. If you're arrogant, if you're prideful, if your nose is in the air, if you think you're better than every, all the other Christians in church and you think you're better than everybody else, God can't bless you because you've got too much pride. You've got to go down a notch or two. Because the Bible said, pride, pride goeth before the fall. And the devil uh, will see to it that he tries to make you think you're all that 
so that if he can get you in just enough pride, then he can take you, he can steal your blessing away. Amen. We are all that in Jesus, but in just our own flesh, we're not all that. And we got to keep that perspective. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. What verse am I in? Okay, there we go. The righteous cries out, and the Lord hears them. I want to tell you what the Hebrew word there means. I can't pronounce it. I'm not going to try. But it is a shriek or cry aloud and proclaim. I do this frequently if I'm about to hit a squirrel or a rabbit or a deer <laughs> on the road. And uh, I do. And it's funny because it just, it, it just comes out. There's a, I didn't shriek early enough, uh, quick enough the other day and ran over. But uh, it, was, it just broke my heart. But anyway, uh, it did. I mean, I don't, like to do, I don't like to hit anything. But so many times, I bet you I have avoided hundreds and hundreds of times hitting things. You know, I'll see them, and I'll, all I have time to say, this is it. I, I just say, Jesus! That's all I say. You know, I don't say, oh, crap, or something. I say, Jesus, you know? <laughs> and, you know, that's all it took. And bless the Lord, I am convinced. Now, you may think, well, it's just the luck of the Irish or whatever. Uh, but no, I believe that, I believe God hears that word Jesus. And even little things like that, I think God will involve himself. Anytime you call on the name of the Lord, he said, but you'd be, you'd be saved and delivered. So I just believe it. Cry out. Be passionate when you seek the Lord. Amen. Cry out passionately. Don't be half-hearted. Amen. Get serious, with, get serious about it with God. If you want something with God, get in there and fight with him. Did you ever remember the story in the Bible where Jacob wrestled with an angel? The Bible said he wrestled with an angel all night long. And he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Amen. Remember that? And we just, we're kind of like, oh, there's an angel. Hey, give me a blessing if you're in the mood, but if you're not, it's okay. Amen, Call the ambulance. <laughs> Seriously. Get after it. You know, I like Jacob. He said, I'm not going to turn loose of you till you bless me. And he wrestled with him all night long. And the Bible said in the morning, right as the sun come up, that the angel blessed him. The angel blessed him. Hallelujah. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it makes sense in this way. And that is, that he who seeks and keeps seeking and knocks and keeps knocking will receive the blessing. Amen. The one who keeps wrestling and struggling and claiming and fighting. And I'm telling you, God's looking for somebody who's not half-hearted. He wants you to go after the blessing. Go after it. Pray, 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 pray. And pray pa passionate. Be passionate about that prayer. Go after it. Amen? You, you ever watch these little kids, you know? Some of them won't hardly say a word, but you know they need some loving and some attention or whatever. And then you, and then you got another one over here. Hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, hold me. Hey, feed me. Hey, give me this. Hey! Well, the squeaky hinge gets old, don't it? I'm squeaky with God. I'm telling you right now. I'm just squeaky with him. I'm going to just, I am going to get my blessing. You've got to be determined. Well, I don't want to bother God. Oh, come on, people. Really? Is God so tired that he can't answer your prayer? Well, it's just a little thing. I don't want to bother him with that. Hey, listen, God is omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. You're not making him tired to ask you for a raise at work. He's not going to get all tired out. Oh, I can't believe 
that they asked me for another blessing. So tired. No, just ask for the blessing. <laughs> Claim the blessing. Well, I need a new car. Well, I ask you for the car. Be careful what you ask for. Amen. That's true. Sometimes you need to ask him what you need to ask him for. Hey, Lord, what do I need? Hallelujah. Passionate. Are you passionate about... Are you on fire for God? Are you lukewarm? Are you cold? There's sometimes I'm cold. There's sometimes I'm kind of lukewarm. There's sometimes I'm really on fire. But what I want to be is on fire all the time. I want to be on fire. My heart is... And when I get in praise and worship, and I got to singing about heaven and thinking about heaven, thinking about my family, I've been looking at pictures of grandma and different ones. You know, I've been finding all these pictures, you know, after mom's stroke, we've been sorting through all of her stuff and looking through uh, pictures and seeing the, oh, that one's in heaven, that one's in heaven, that one's in heaven, that one's in heaven. Amen. And I want to go to heaven. And I get excited sometimes. And I started getting excited about going to heaven. And I read a, I found a letter that Grandma and Grandpa sent me uh, when I was off in Bible college in 1983. A letter from 1983, and they were telling me, you know, and they said, let me tell you about Grandma and Grandpa. They sent me popcorn every month. When, when, when I was going to Bible college, I said, well, you don't make much money when you're in uh, Bible college, when you're in college. So they sent me popcorn and $100 every month. Popcorn and $100 every month. And they sent, and I got to reading that letter, and I got to crying in my garage. Hallelujah. And I got to thinking, I'm going to go there. 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 Amen. This world is not my home. We used to sing a hymn in Baptist church. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Amen. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. <laughs> the angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I don't feel at home in this world anymore. One of these days, we're going to go there. And when I, go, when I go, don't cry for me. If, I don't know who's going to be here or not. Don't cry for me. Dance around the church and shout for me. Because I'm in a better place. Bless the Lord. Amen. I'm so glad. Be passionate, though. Did Jesus save you or not? Are your sins forgiven or not? Well, if they are, you ought to be excited about it. And when you pray, you ought to be excited. And when you go to God for something, you ought to claim it. Because he's a father that wants to bless you. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, of whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Number eight, rejoice in your trouble. James 2, four, uh, 2 to 4. James 2, 2 to 4. Rejoice in your trouble. I have trouble with this one. Can anybody else join me in this, having a little bit of trouble with this one right here? When you're in trouble, you're supposed to rejoice. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I wish I was. <laughs> I know to do it. And usually somebody will remind me, hey, preacher, didn't you tell us to rejoice? And then I go, yeah, all right, I'm, gonna I'm just going to make that choice right now. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. And then as soon as you start doing it, you start feeling better. As soon as you start praising the Lord in the middle of your trouble, you just start feeling better. It feels better to praise. James uh, 1, uh, verse 2 to 4, says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into divers temptations, troubles, or trials, knowing that the testing of your faith... See, we're, getting, we're being tested. Sometimes the devil's throwing the test at it. Sometimes the father's throwing the test at us. Either way, I want to throw, I want to pass the test. How about you? And if the devil's throwing a test at me, I'm going to pass it. If the father's throwing a test at me, I don't care who's throwing it at me. I'm going to pass that test in Jesus' name. And I think sometimes the devil just throws as, as much as that is, as, just like he did Job. Throw as many things at you at once as he can. Don't it seem like it just comes when it rains, it pours? Anybody else feel that? It says, 
you don't your car don't just break down, but your car breaks down, your refrigerator breaks down, you get a uh, hangnail, you get a you get an ingrown toenail, your hemorrhoids start bothering you, your ear aches, you know. You don't have money for your you don't have enough money for your utility bill. And then your kids so you get kicked out of school that week because they fought with somebody and took a knife to school and somebody else did this and somebody else did that. And then your wife's mad at you for something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When it, you know what I'm saying though, really? Yeah, am I kidding or not? When it rains, it seems to pour. I think that's the devil. I think he just tried to throw everything at you that he can at once, just like he did with Job. Just, just whammo and hit you just as, with as many things as you can. See if he can get you to steal your faith away. Yep. Well, you know what? It don't matter how much the, the devil hits me and how much he takes away from me or steals from me. He stole from Job. And it don't matter how much he takes or steals away from me. I'm going to claim it back from, in Jesus' name. And I'm going to make a choice to rejoice anyway. Amen. We just got to i got to read the rest of this passage. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect results so you may be perfect and complete, right, lacking nothing. Amen. As we rejoice in the middle of that, we pass that uh, patience test. See? Endurance. Patience means endurance is what it means in the Greek. Endurance means you keep going. I saw this really, really, really fat guy on this endurance test. How many of you have ever seen the 600-pound life or my 600-pound life? Well, there's this one of these guys on there, and, and he would, you know, he lost like 300 pounds, but he was still, you know, 300 pounds still. But bless the Lord. And so, but he was in this uh, this endurance uh, run, and then they had to run a while, and they had to swim around and bicycle a while, and you know, I'm like 80 pounds less than him, and and I'm going, I can do that. But of course, I was also 30 years, 30 years uh, older. But so I use that as an excuse in my mind. But anyway, uh, he just. But you know, he kept running, and he kept swimming. And he kept going, and he kept going, and he kept going, and he kept going, and he kept going. And he, you know, he, he, he ran through that whole marathon thing. He ran through that, and he came to the finish line. I don't know how he did it. I looked at him, I said, I don't know how you did that. I'm talking to the television. You ever talk to television? I talk to the television. I don't know how you did that. But he did it. You know why? Because he kept going. Well, you keep, keep going in your Christian faith. If somebody, some Christian in the church, some relative, some friend, whatever, gives you a good cussing and hurts your feelings and whatever, you just keep going. Amen. Give them some time to repent. Let the Holy Ghost work on them. And you just keep going. You keep going. You keep running. You lose a marriage, end up in a divorce, you get discouraged have to move into an apartment out of a nice house, this and that, bad thing, just keep going. You keep going. You keep going. Because we got heaven to look for. We're going to cross that finish right, line. We're going to cross that finish line, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. And it says rejoice. Rejoice. Count it all joy when all this stuff is coming at you. Why? Because you know that it's all going to work together for your good eventually. Doesn't it say that in Romans 8, 28? And all we know. It didn't say when we hope or we guess or we wonder or we... It says we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans 8, 28. He's going to make it work together for your good in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I done preach myself happy now. Bless the Lord. Number nine. Avoid wickedness. Avoid wickedness. Proverbs eleven eighteen. And the godly are rescued from trouble. And it falls on the wicked instead. Stay godly. Just keep doing the right thing. Well, I did the right thing and then I got in trouble. Do it anyway. Do the right thing anyway. Do the right thing anyway. 
Because in the long run, you're going to be blessed. Stay godly. What's that mean? Be right. Do the right thing. Amen. Amen. Number 10. Put God first. We already said that. But it wasn't in a scriptural point, but I'll give you the point here. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first. Say first. first. Everybody say, not second. Not, second. not, third, not third. Or anything below there. But first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things are going to be added unto you. Put God first. Don't go after the thing. Go after God. Let the thing come. Let the thing come. Well, I want this. I want this. And then you give up your spiritual walk to get the thing that you want. And when you do that... You lo- usually you lose both. Did you hear me? When you do that, you usually use, lose both of them. Because he said, it, you're not going to have any other gods before me. The, the Bible says that, that your idols are going to come back and attack you. There's a passage in the Old Testament said our idols will come back and attack us. The things that we put above God, they're going to come back and bite you in the butt, as they say. Amen? Believe, number 12, in the compassion of God's comfort. So important to know how God's love is. But uh, 2 Corinthians... 1, 3, and 4 says, Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion. Say compassion. What's he the Father of? Hallelujah. And the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Say troubles. See, we're talking about troubles, getting out troubles, right? So that we can comfort those in any way with the comfort we ourselves are comforted of God. God's comfort comes for those of us that are in trouble, believe in that comfort. I've been in trouble, and when nothing else, nothing else in the life, nobody else could comfort me, Jesus was able to comfort me. Hallelujah. Believe in that. Believe in the compassion of God. Believe in that. Nancy preached a sermon the day that her mom died in this pulpit right here. And it was entitled, Believe the Love. Believe the Love. And I believe in the love that God has for us. My final point is number 13. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And uh, I'm going to look at Matthew chapter 18. And I don't know what verse is it. Is it? Did I have some of those uh, scriptures pulled up? All right, just start at, start at the top and let's just read them. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me up to seven times? Question mark. Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the master, ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. They had to work in a work camp is what they had to do back in those days. If, if you couldn't pay your debt, they would put you in a work camp until the debt was paid. The servants fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. How many of your debts have been canceled and you've been let go? By Jesus' blood, hallelujah, by salvation of the cross. But when that servant went out... So the guy who just got forgiven, are you with me in the story? The man who was just forgiven. 
And I, I looked it up, and it's a comparison of, uh, like this first man, oh, what does any of your Bible footnotes say? I, it looked like it was $10 million to me is what it looked like. Uh, when I looked it up in the in the uh, uh, concordance, uh, that's a lot of money. You know, I, I, first of all, how could you ever work off that much money? But the servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and that's like I thought it was something like. $500 or something. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owed me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. The exact words he used when he was forgiven. But he refused and said he went off and had the man thrown into, pr into prison or to the work camp until he should pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. There's unforgiveness issues in this church. The reason I know that is because I'm in this church and I have to deal with it myself. And most of you are human beings, I'm pretty sure. Might be a couple aliens in here. A couple men in black aliens, maybe. Amen. But the rest of us need to deal with this forgiveness issue. And God is telling us in this passage of Scripture that when we don't forgive, we're turned over. The King James Version says you're turned over to the torturers. I always just believe that's the demons. I don't know if it is or not, but that's what I believe it is. I believe the torturers are the demons. And they torture us. They torture our mind. They attacked us. But have you ever noticed that when you forgive and you release forgiveness to the people that have hurt you, that a peace comes over you? Peace comes in your mind. A peace comes in your body. A peace just settles over you. But as long as you don't, there is something eating at you. Something's eating your lunch. It, you know, if I know somebody's mad at me, I can't hardly rest. I really can't. I, have, I, I mean, I can't hardly rest. I mean, I'll drive across town or across the state if I can't get a hold of you on the phone. I want to make sure that things are right. Amen. Now, that don't mean I have to agree with you. Now, I may not agree with you about something, but I want my heart to be right, and I want my attitude to be right. And this is something that will get us out of trouble. If you and I will forgive, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. And do you ever think about that? You're in trouble every time you pray that, that uh, prayer. <laughs> if you won't forgive, if you refuse to forgive and move on in your life, and you pray that prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And you won't forgive? Then the Lord, you know what you're saying to the Lord? Now, Lord, 
just in the same way that I'm doing, I want you to do to me. That's what that prayer says. Hello? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's why we're in trouble. I'm convinced a whole lot of our trouble, you know what I think a lot of our mental conditions are? A lot of our mental conditions, depression, anxiety, all kind of our mental conditions are because we've got unforgiveness. Get it out, get it out, get it out, and release a blessing to those that have hurt you and those who have disappointed you, who've offended you, who've abused you. You got to do it. Because if we do, the Bible says that that you'll be forgiven. Likewise shall your heavenly Father do unto you. Amen. For to who, him who gives mercy shall mercy be shown. Forgiven you shall be forgiven. Show mercy and you shall be shown mercy. It's time for us to, to get this area uh, of our lives straightened out so that we can receive the blessing of the Lord. Let's stand together.